Hello there folks, it is TIJ Gaming and welcome to the start of a brand new series on the channel. Today we are starting our Let's Play, our career mode, whatever you want to call it, of Formula 1 2013. Now I appreciate that Formula 1 2019 comes out this week, which means that this is possibly out of place with a game that's six years newer, but it's exactly the right time to do it. I've got just about the time to do it and there'll be two episodes of this a week on a Wednesday and on a Saturday evening, which you guys enjoyed so much when we did the F1 2012 career mode. And you haven't, if you haven't watched that yet, I'd recommend you go and watch that as well. Uh, that is in the archives of the channel. In the, um, I think it's called Content from the Archives playlist on the channel homepage. But today we are starting a new chapter with the Formula 1 2013 career. Now, we ended the 2012 season with Lotus. We've got a contract for next year as well. Always a good start, having to reconnect the controller straight away, but our teammate once again is Kimi Raikkonen this year. Now, of course, Kimi Raikkonen was the man who won this Grand Prix, the 2013 Australian Grand Prix, and it was his last win until 2018 at Austin. Let's hope we get a few more wins than that this season. Now, I haven't played this game's career mode for a hell of a long time. I'm sure it is a bit of a flashback uh, and a throwback for you guys as well. But we've got, I think it's 19 rounds. Yep, 19 rounds this season. Uh, plenty to do and plenty of exciting races for us to have. Of course, the last season, I think, uh, up to date where Brazil has closed the calendar. But it all starts here in today's episode at the Australian Grand Prix uh, set around the man-made Albert Park Lake. Great circuit and it's opened the F1 calendar for a long while. Now, just a few emails. Got Eric Boulio, remember him. Welcome to Lotus. I would like to welcome you to Lotus and wish you well for the season ahead. And we're looking for you to finish no lower than fourth. I'll take a quick look at the grid in just a second. Race results. Rob Thompson's have been Walker, the same guys we had last year. Uh, but nothing too interesting there. No rain forecast for this weekend as well. So, in terms of the drivers at the teams, the top four doesn't change. Red Bull and Ferrari stay the same from 2012. Now, of course, Sergio Perez has joined Jensen Button at McLaren with Lewis Hamilton going to Mercedes alongside Rosberg. That was, of course, Schumacher's last year in the sport. Uh, and then I think it's two changes at Sauber. Hulkenberg joins Gutierrez with Paul Resta and Adrian Suttil at Force India. God, I didn't realise they were teammates. Maldonado and Bottas were at Williams. That was Bottas' first year, I believe. And then we had Vernon Ricciardo at Toro Rosso, Charles Pick and Van der Gaard at Caterham, Bianchi and Chilton at Marussia. And, of course, that's it for the grid. HRT were out of the sport by then. So, without any further ado, we're just going to set the race settings up. We're going to have... Uh, short will we can we full qualifying 25% races let's go stepping into that 2013 lotus for the first time We've got 20 minutes in this session. Hopefully we should get out of Q1. No problems. It is the bottom six that go, so it'll be the usual four. And then two more, which is probably the Toro Rossos or the Williams. I don't think we're looking at anywhere near elimination. So we'll set a few times on the primes, see how we get on, and hopefully we should be through to the next session. We've got quite a different handling model here from F1 2012, I would say. This really punishes hard braking, so you have to almost tap it into the corner. Uh, I've got anti-lock brakes off, so it makes it a bit more of a challenge. You can't just floor it into the corner with your brakes. I mean, I would I would show you an example, but we're on a flying lap, so I think that might not be the best for our time. But hopefully this is a good bank lap. Now, no idea what a good time is on 2013, so we'll just set two lap times, and hopefully that should be enough to get into Q2. But some interesting uh, dynamics here with the, with the handling, but hopefully something I'll get used to, and at least it's a good challenge. Somehow, I don't think a 129 is going to be good enough. We've been beaten by Jules Bianchi, for goodness sake, and fair play to Bianchi for beating us, but we're three seconds off Suttil's delta in that Force India of a 126.6. But to be fair, we were 1.3 seconds up just in the first sector uh, on what we'd done previously, so there should be a big delta improvement, and there we go. That should be enough to get us into the next session. We are eight tenths off the Force Indias, but we are on the prime tyre, so I think we should just about be okay. Now, do we take the risk and stay in the pits? As you see, John Eric Verne is four attempts behind, but that Toro Rosso has definitely got the pace because Ricardo set a time that's only a second off the pace. 
Ooh. Hmm. Do we just go for a run on the on the options? Be safe. I think we'll, well, I think we'll try one, one more lap on those primes that we've already got. Again, they're a bit worn, but no worry there. Uh, low fuel, and hopefully we should be able to get out of this comfortably. We escaped a bullet there, because we'd have definitely been out if we hadn't gone and set a lap. Jensen Button very close as well in that McLaren, but we set a good lap on the prime tyres. Tenth place, that puts us up for the next session. I think take those four Indians out of the equation, who probably are on option tyres, and this might not be bad pace. Now, because we didn't use a set of options in the last session, we do have one more to use here. We've got five sets for the weekend with a 25% Grand Prix. That's no problem. We won't use all of our sets unless something ridiculous happens in the race. Uh, but we can use this free set of options now. Maybe do two or three laps. The time that we've got to beat at the moment is a 26.6, I believe, from Jensen. And if my memory serves me right, only short-term memory, we did set a 126 dead on the prime tyres. So... I think on the options, we should be able to improve that. But surprising, even though I know that McLaren weren't that quick in this season, that Button is on the edge of going out in Q2. Ooh, that's close in our first lap. Just about below Jensen's time. Now, we were two temps quicker than him in the first sector. Two temps down in sector two. So, he must have been very close in that last sector. I guess fuel will help, but this could be quite tight to get into the next session. This could be a bit better, couldn't it? Goodness me, half a second up on Jensen Button's second sector. And seven cents up on our own personal best. This could be a good lap. I don't think we'll need anything else after this if we keep the pace up to get into Q3. But this car looks strong. I've got no complaints. It really turns well. Uh, we've got the handling problem with the brakes, but that's just natural. You're going to get that with any car with a handling model on 2013. A little bit of a snap there, but we get out of it nicely into fourth gear. DRS on. Curse down the straights. What's the time going to be? It's definitely going to be an improvement. It's a 125. Point eight, just behind our teammate. Okay, fair enough. Two tenths behind our teammate. But that should get us in to Q3. And with that, we are in to Q3. Mercedes showing very strong pace. It's a bit of a shock, but fair play to them. But Jensen Button out of that session, the big casualty so far. And quite a way off his teammate, uh, Sergio Perez. So, only one McLaren in this session. Only one Sauber. Not really a surprise with Gutierrez. Both Ferraris, both Red Bulls, both Mercedes. And, of course, both Lotus cars. So, the plan for Q3 is very simple. We've gone on our uh, used tyres from Q2 just to do a quick lap. Got about eight minutes left, so plenty left. Just to do a bank lap, see where we are in terms of the pace, and then put some fresh options on, probably for a two-lap run to see how we get up the grid. But a 124.7 is a very strong lap by Seb Vettel. We've got to try and finish in P4 to meet the team's expectations. I think that might be a little bit high, considering how we've got on the rest of the weekend. But we'll try our best. We'll see how we got on. But certainly not use laps and laps and laps and laps and laps up just to try and get there. But Sergio Perez in that McLaren, not showing strong pace. I'm glad I didn't go with McLaren. McLaren uh, seems to be lapping quite poorly. But as usual, the 2010 to 2013 era, it looks like Sebastian Vettel might well be on pole. But let's have a look what our first sector split is before we go away. Yeah, we're quite a while off. But bear in mind, we are on our used tyres. So not a bad delta, I suppose. Yeah, we could probably do with those new tyres. We, we made one or two mistakes on that lap, but we're going to get back to the pitch straight away. We haven't actually got as much time as I thought we had, so might only get time for one lap here, and it's got to be a good stonkering lap to try and get up to P4. Just the one flying lap available, then we've got to make it a good one, but starting in Q3 is positive enough, I think. Getting up to fourth would be a bit of a struggle from here, but let's see how we get on. I think we've blown it, guys. I think we have blown it. We made quite a mistake down at turn three, lot the tyres. And that is a long way off. Seven tenths off just our first sector. That's going to be a long time to make up. That being said, though, I suppose, our, our second and third sectors were dreadful. So, <sighs> let's see if we can improve. It's going to be doubtful. I will stay with you now until the end of the session. But it looks like Sebastian Vettel has managed to get pole position. Further six tenths down now on the sector. We've cut the corner as well. So, that's it for our qualifying. Tenth place. I'm not too fussed about that. The team, I don't think, will be too happy. But 10th place, you know, it's it's not the worst start in the world. And I think we can definitely make gains at the start. It's race day, the first of the 2013 season. Let's try and extend that stint to lap six, shall we, for the, uh, for the prime tyres. I obviously have to start on these options. And that is the grid. So Vettel's on pole, Rosberg alongside him, a double German front row. Alonso third and Hamilton fourth. Basically, everyone's all over the place. Four positions between the Red Bulls, two between the uh, 
Mercedes cars, four between the Ferraris, of course, four between the Lotuses. So yeah, it's quite a mixed grid. So let's see how we get on. Race one of the 2013 season. We've got to make some sort of impression. The lights are on. Fourth place, the objective might be a bit high, but we'll try our best. As we said before, the lights are out and away we go for the first race in our 2013 season. Not the strongest start, really. We've lost the position there to Jensen Button, but the first corner is always a little bit of a bottleneck here at uh, Albert Park. Not the worst out of there. Not gaining anything out of there, which is a bit of a shame. But Jensen Button has took us at the start. Not really much of a surprise with the experience that Jensen has got. But a good start as well for the likes of Esteban Gutierrez. But we can go up the inside of Button. Oh, we've just tapped the back of Hamilton. But luckily, no risk of any problem from that. Perez trying to keep the position for Hamilton. Hamilton going way up the inside. That's just plain wrong. An illegal overtake. We know we've seen that before with someone uh, entering the track dangerously. But Perez fighting for his every width and every centimetre to keep this position. And we're having a good battle with Sergio Perez, but we've got the inside line and we should come out the victor, and that is a pretty good start. Esteban Gutierrez overtakes his teammate as well, so a very good start from 15th, I think Esteban started. Now we've got to make sure we keep up with our teammate and equally the top six. Got a mega run on our teammate, goodness knows where that, that's come from. We're not going to be too hasty trying to get past Kimi. We had a really good run out of the left-hand chicane, left-right chicane, and then we used a bit of our curves and we just went right to the back of him. But as I say, I'm not going to be too hostile towards our teammate. We don't want to try and take him out. We've not really got that many points as it stands anyway. But a better acceleration from Kimi out of the corner. And because of our fuel, I mean, we've only got it on cautious. So it shows that even on cautious, we have to be very, very cautious with the fuel. Pardon the pun. But we have to put it back into standard already. So not going to have as much pace. The top five or top six even seem to have absolutely vanished. So... This might be where we're sat for the rest of the race. And Perez right is right up our behind. So it might be a tricky race. We might only go backwards from here. And that's a big lock up. But as I say, luckily, we keep the position. Oh, we've had a bad corner there. And Perez has gone through. But what I did notice at that corner, I mean, these tyres are shod, to be honest. Uh, but equally, we've got to stay out on them. Because the primes will just be shod if we don't uh, let these last a little bit longer. But... I might, you might have seen it the first corner. That's why I cut into this uh, segment, really. Even though Perez got past. Probably me getting all distracted by that. I shouldn't say these tyres are completely gone. But nothing we can do about it because we need to keep them until we get on the primes. Or else we're just going to have the same problem. So take the short-term pain for the long-term gain, in my opinion. But that first corner, there was a bit of front wing debris. Uh, and I'm guessing that's there from guys from ahead. It's got to be someone ahead because... I very much doubt it's anybody behind. Uh, but it just made me wonder there's two guys who were a long way behind in sector one. So it might be someone who was behind, but then I'm surprised that that front wing damage uh, and that debris hasn't been cleared up in the space of a lap. So it might be one of the top six, but I doubt it. But another position lost to Perez. And it's lap six we're meant to be pitting. I mean, lap five was what was suggested. But I think, again, it's that short-term uh, pain for the long-term gain. These tyres have just completely gone. I regret not going into the pits. We made a mistake at the last corner. It's just using our curves to pull out from uh, Paul de Resta. But these tyres have just absolutely gone. Uh, we are definitely going to box this lap. Oh, God. So we are going to have to pit this lap. We've got no choice. But these tyres have just completely gone. Look at this. Jesus. That's really not a good way to start the season, is it? I don't know how everybody else is coping, but we've just completely worn these. These have gone, as you can visibly tell. What a disastrous lap. We can't even get in a straight line. These tyres are just completely shot. I don't understand why. I mean, we're going to let Bottas through, because it's only fair. I mean, look at that lock. We have done nothing to initiate that lock, and, well, the tyres are just completely gone, and we could have a really shocking result here, but what can you do, eh? Oh, so slow through this pit lane. It's so agonising. Everybody else, I think, has come into the pit. So, luckily, we can pit as well. Get off those dreadful option tyres. I think we'll have to consider maybe starting on the primes in a few races just to overcome that problem. But, again, we're <laughs> we're really at the level, as you can see here. Jules Bianchi is coming out just behind us. You know, it's amazing, really, how far that gap is. And that's a caterer overtaking. It was, he might have been one of the ones who... To come to a bit of damage earlier. Let's just have a quick look. Has Charles pick pitted? He has. Wow. 
He'll have to pit again because he pitted early, so we're not going to have a worry about that. But this just shows the magnitude of how bad that lap was for our race. Well, everyone's pitted, so this is the serious running order now. Oh, dear. Well, I suppose we were behind Bottas. That makes complete sense. We are in P17, the bottom of all cars, apart from the bottom four. That being said, though, that doesn't really work, does it? Uh, how could... If Charles picks up here... Must be four. Adrian Suttill, oh, he's, had a, he's had a terrible race, but that's someone. That's the Williams, I'm guessing, of Bottas, so we're going to go after him. And it's just damaged limitation, this race is now, and a real shame. Got the measure of peak going around the outside. I think we'll even get him before the corner, but that cage from is so slow, it's ridiculous. Right, now Bottas. You got past us on bad tyres. Let's test real driver ability. Of course, this was Valtteri Bottas, his debut race. So let's see if we can make him look a fool. And overtake him. Of course, we are in a faster Lotus. So let's see how we get on. Of course, our teammate being his compatriot, Kimi Raikkonen. I think we should be able to set the left right and then get a good run out of there. And hopefully get him into that next corner. Looks decent to me. Use our curves. Get a great run. Stay on the outside. That's a nice overtake. And there's the Toro Rosso up ahead. So we, could, we can start to rebuild now. But the danger is we have got to push these tyres quite a bit. Ricardo's the next victim. He's good at attacking. Is he so good at defence? We shut him out. He might go for that outside line. We're running him a little bit wide, but no problem with that. But the gap to the guys ahead is huge. Look at that. We might be able to pull that in seven, seven laps, but not any time soon. Oh, Esteban Gutierrez is pitting, so goodness knows why that is. I'm sure he pitted once. He might have had the collision with Peak. I doubt it because he was, you know, he was quite a way forward, so that's nonsense. But obviously Gutierrez having to pick twice, so we pick off another position, but a point's finish and certainly fourth place. Fourth place is, is long gone. Oh, we've got a retirement, and that's Jensen Button. He's really not had a good weekend here, has he? Knocked out of Q2, and now out of the race, I presume, because of some sort of issue. Again, we don't know what that is, but no safety cars for us. But I've been away from you for a few laps, so let's talk about what we've done. So we've gapped really nicely now to John Eric Verne. The one uh, Toro Rosso has just gone away. I mean, it was so much quicker than Ricardo. It's obviously we've got good pace around it. It's just that one lap that we lost so much time, a good 8-10 seconds of time, I would say, that we're in the position we are now, which is always a bit of a shame. But again, it's the odd race. It's not the best start to the season, but we can be confident we got the pace. And with three laps to go, I reckon we can get past Verne. Now, within a second of Jeff, we've got just over two laps to go. Hopefully, We'll get our first use of DRS on the front straight in the race and hopefully get past the Frenchman with no real worries. Not the best breaking into there. Our tyres might be starting to go off a little bit. Hopefully not as much as the options did. You can see definitely got a better exit there. But get the DRS on. Might not be enough to have a look at the tyres. They're not looking that great, but with two laps to go, we should just be alright. We're not going to be able to get him here. Is it a double DRS here or uh, at this point? I forgot in 2013. That's a poor corner entry. We're getting it all wrong on camera here. Getting all uh, flustered. So it might take a little bit longer to get past Jeff. We're not going to launch a stupid break in uh, manoeuvre there. So we're just going to have to have some patience and hopefully get past Vern. There we go. Got a good run through here. Hopefully he'll stay Ooh, out. We have a bit of contact with him, but nothing too severe. And we are now past the Toro Rosso. I don't think the gap's going to be small enough to catch past Maldonado one lap to go. But you'll bet your life that we'll go as quick as we can and see if we can get that gap. Because 11th place... If we started 10th, I mean equally 12th place isn't too bad I suppose. But 11th place after starting 10th, not a catastrophic one. And I think that considering the time we lost, I know we can't blame everything on that. But ultimately that was the end of our competitive run in this race. I think 12th or 11th place would be a very good result. And just to see what the fastest laps will be from everyone here. Not quite sure what our pace looks like married up to everyone else. Still having a little bit of trouble with lockups. So definitely a bit of pace to be found there in future races. But just the one lap to go. I don't think the gap's going to be big enough to get to Pastor Maldonado. But as I say, we'll try our best. Nico Rosberg wins the Australian Grand Prix. That's Mercedes' first win then since they returned to Formula 1. Now we've got a really good slipstream on Pastor Maldonado. We're again brilliant on that. We're going to go around the inside line. And I think that should be P11 wrapped up. Let's get the braking right. Bang on. And 11th place is a result we'll definitely take here. Nico Rosberg winning the Grand Prix though. That's a big shock. Big shock to the system. Mercedes taking the first one of the season. Not Sebastian Vettel. That's always a big shock. But no points for us today. I'm sure Kimmy got a few points. I'll have a look at the full race classification afterwards. But not a bad return to the Formula 1 games. And we take 11th place in this Australian Grand Prix. Nothing to celebrate really. I understand that. But Kimmy finished 7th. So a good 6 points for the team. Again it would have probably been 10. 
if we'd have stayed in 8th place. But for now, it's one bad race and hopefully it's uh, just a bit of... A rarity rather than the norm. But DK Rosberg and... Wow, Hamilton gets up to second place. So Vettel must have had a problem at some point, I'm guessing. I mean, our pace was pretty much there with the leaders, as you can see. Uh, actually, we got a faster lap than our teammates. Yeah, we did. I'm reading that absolutely right. But Vettel must have made a mistake. So it's a Mercedes 1-2. Something you might well see these days, but not necessarily in 2013. So, we know what the Drivers' Championship is. Exactly the same as what it would be. And the Constructors looks like that. Mercedes taking full points and Ferrari with 27. And I bet Red Bull are bloody disappointed with only taking 14. But a decent start for McLaren with 8. And ourselves with 6 points. Saib with 2. Force India with 1. And Williams, Toro Rosso, Marussia and Caterham not scoring any points. But my first race back on F1 2013. I don't think it's a bad result. It's a little bit of a disappointment. We're not going to get all hung there in press. Because we're just going to move into Malaysia. And give it our best. But uh, Nico Rosberg winning the Mercedes. Well, winning in the Mercedes. At Australia. That's a big shock. And now we get to Kuala Lumpur. Of course, what happened at Kuala Lumpur in 2013? Multi-21. Should be an interesting one. But three emails. A uh, bit of R&D stuff. And ooh, a bit of rain forecast for Friday. And potentially overcast for Saturday and Sunday. So, could be a very interesting race. But that's the data from the first race. Not a bad race, really, in the end. But thank you very much, folks, for your company today. I hope you've enjoyed the return of Formula 1 on the channel. If you have, make sure to leave a like down below just so I know that you have. And also subscribe for two F1 videos a week. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys on Saturday at 8pm with the next episode. Goodbye. Actually, is it 8pm? Is it 8pm? I don't think it is. No, it'll be 6pm on... Am I being right now? Yeah, I think it, I think it'll be 6pm on Saturday. Because that's the day that Mother GP comes out. So, yep, yeah, so it's 6 pm on Saturday. I'll see you then for the next episode. Goodbye for now.